Well, Pastor Dalrock wrote an article about the earnest defense of John MacArthur's chivalry. Now, he said, <laughs> this is great. A few years back, John MacArthur outraged a large portion of complementarians because he said Beth Moore should go home, go home. And then a large crowd of enraged, crazed patriarchs laughed <laughs> as John MacArthur said, Beth Moore, go home. Now, Pastor Dalrock writes, there should really be no controversy among conservative Christians regarding MacArthur's comment there. Scripturally, he's on solid ground to say <laughs> women should not preach, right, Elena? That's right. You, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right. But he's on solid ground scripturally to say that, but chivalry has become almost a secondary religion for conservative Christians, despite the fact that chivalry is antithetical to Christianity. Even though John MacArthur's comments are biblically sound, they strike us as being unchivalrous. And that's why so many people felt they needed to come to his rescue to say, no, no, John MacArthur is a good guy. He, he, he's okay. Don't, don't say that, oh, he's a bad person. Now, Pastor Dalrock then, he relates what, what's going on here with Beth Moore to Wayne Grudem and John Piper when they wrote the Complementarian Manifesto called Recovering Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, a Response to Evangelical Feminism. And in this, now this is really interesting. In this, they rejected, this was in the 1980s, early 1980s, they rejected the traditional reading of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, which says women aren't allowed to preach. But they said that the Apostle Paul wasn't saying women aren't allowed to preach. And he wasn't saying in chapter 2, verse 14, that women are more gullible than men. But what the Apostle Paul meant was that men were simply created first. So here's what 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse, we'll back up to verse 12, says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be silent. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. The traditional reading of that was that women are, are more easily deceived. They are more gullible than men. That's, that's the way the church has interpreted that for thousands of years until we got second wave feminism. Then it was a little bit different. But here's what they say in the in Recovering Biblical Man and Womanhood, the Complementarian Manifesto. Here's what they say. It says, do you think women are more gullible than men? That's the question in the manifesto. It says, historically, this has usually been taken to mean that women are more gullible or deceivable than men and therefore less fit for doctrinal oversight of the church. This may be true. However, we are attracted to another understanding of Paul's argument. Okay, what is that, what is that understanding? They say, we think Satan's main target was not Eve's peculiar gullibility, if she had one, but rather Adam's headship as the one ordained by God to be responsible for the life of the garden. Satan subtly knew the created order that God had made, and so he deliberately defied it by ignoring the man and taking up his dealings with the woman. Oh, that's the issue. So they say, if this is the proper understanding, then what Paul meant in 1 Timothy 2.14 was this. Adam was not deceived, meaning that is, he was not approached by Satan and did not carry on direct dealings with the deceiver. I know. Elena, can you believe that? What? So they're saying the complementary position from the beginning has been one of a radical innovation to accommodate the feminist demands that women are the exact same as men. Exact same mentality, exact same mentally, maybe not 100% physically, but mentally they're the exact same. No, no, no issue, no, no differences here mentally. 
It says, no longer are women prohibited from preaching because they are more easily deceived. Instead, they are to focus on preaching to other women because Adam failed to protect Eve. In a separate chapter in the book, Dr. Mu, who contributed, reiterates that the Apostle Paul cannot have meant that women were more easily deceived because this would mean that women shouldn't be preaching to women which I would agree with also. Women should not be preaching to women. Men are called to be the preachers to men and women. Now, older women can teach younger women in the home. That's a great thing as they do it communally. What are you doing reaching for that? But the preaching is not to be done by women. So Pastor Galrock says the complementarian objection to the plain meaning of 1 Timothy is rooted in their dedication to chivalry. We must defend Milady at all costs. And so they say that MacArthur's defenders here in his comment about Beth Moore, they have felt the foremost need to stress his adherence to scripture is in no way unchivalrous to Beth Moore. And so they defend it by saying, well, it wasn't only men who were laughing when John MacArthur said this at the conference. It was also women who laughed too. So then it's not unchivalrous for him to say these things. It's, it's not unkind. Even, even Toby Sumter, who is Doug Wilson's son-in-law, came out in defense of John MacArthur here. And he wrote a lengthy article, which Pastor Dalrock goes into, and says that he digresses in the article explaining the proper chivalrous response, not just to Beth Moore, but to women pushing their way into other places, such as men's sports. And he says, <laughs> he says, the chivalrous solution to women coming into men's sports is to simply forfeit the match to the women who are pushing their way in. He says in such as uh, a girl wrestling a boy, it's immodest, it's dishonorable, and it's shameful, period, full stops. So our boys who wrestle will forfeit any match to a girl. And he, he posits this, because it's the chivalrous thing to do, Toby Sumter then posits this as the Christian thing to do. Sa says where? In scripture. What? And then in the same article at other places, Sumter explains the chivalrous thing to do sometimes is for boys and men to make it safe for women and girls to push their way into men's sports, such as in lacrosse or football when the girls are playing. The boys should not aggressively push them out of bounds. They should do it as gently as possible if it's a girl. He says that our, our boys, <clears throat> this problem isn't going to go away, so our boys need to somehow learn to fight, but sometimes how to fight with one arm tied behind our back, and how to fight as honorable Christian men as we fight girls. What? what? And so Sumter explains then that John MacArthur was merely being chivalrous and telling Beth Moore to go home. He says John MacArthur's two-word response was one of the best I could imagine. He blessed her even as he gave her a brotherly shove. Go home. Get off the field, Miss Moore. You are a lady. Your calling is higher. You have a different glory. You deserve better. And it's actually Beth Moore's supporters who are being unchivalrous, that they are asking her to compete with the men. <laughs> And so Pastor Dalrock, he concludes with saying that what makes the adoption of chivalry a parody of Christianity so insidious is that its adherents, meaning Toby Sumter, John Piper, Wayne Grudem, Dr. Moo, all these guys, they, they don't even know that they have replaced Christianity with something else, mainly chivalry. And even he, he puts an asterisk at the end of the article that he wrote, and I'll put a link to it. He says, Piper 
since he wrote the book, has wiggled this loophole even wider for women, explaining that it's appropriate for Beth Moore to preach to men so long as the men don't become dependent on her as their shepherd or their pastor. Whoa, whoa, man, this is such bad stuff. Hey, if you're liking this content, hey, give me a like, subscribe to my channel, uh, give me a comment. I need a comment on this stuff. I like comments. Give me a comment. And also, I've got to conclude with Christ is winning. He is building his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Until next time, this is the Post Millennial Man.